recording. Thank you. Uh, so thank you again for coming along to this session, which is about early entry courses. Uh, this session is aimed at parents and carers uh, of students in year 12 who are planning on applying to those courses uh, in 2022 for 2023. But if there are any students here, then uh, good afternoon. And it is an absolute pleasure to, uh, to have you along as well. As I've just said, the recording of this will be on our YouTube channel if anyone wants to access it later. And I will also put the slides on the Ackland Burley website. If you can't access them there or find them, uh, feel free to email me and I will send them on to you. Uh, so just uh, a little bit of you know, how to get in touch with me during this. I'm going to run through the presentation. Uh, if you need to ask a question, there is a Q&A and a chat box at the bottom. Please feel free to, uh, to type any questions that you have. I probably won't see them until I have finished the presentation. So any questions that come up, I will answer them uh, at, the, at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, so just gonna check and see if we've got any questions at the moment. Nope, we are all good. Uh, and so I will get started. Love it. So just to clarify, first of all, uh, exactly what I mean by early entry. Uh, I mean any courses that are taught at Oxford or Cambridge universities, uh, and also any courses that are medicine, dentistry, or veterinary courses. And they are called early entry because they have an earlier deadline than all other university courses. So we tend to sort of pull them together under this headline. Uh, the deadline for early entry is the 15th of October. Uh, and UCAS applications must be completed and sent by 6 p.m. on that day. Those deadlines are not flexible at all. Uh, so if your child is planning to apply for one of these courses, they must that, that form must be with UCAS by 6 p.m. Uh, the deadline for all other courses at all other universities isn't until the last Wednesday in the following January. So in this case, this year is the 25th of January 2023. So there is quite a gap between the early entry deadline and the deadline for all other courses. And that really is all other courses. Uh, so anything that anything that isn't taught at Oxford or Cambridge and anything that isn't medicine, dentistry or veterinary all have their deadline in on the 25th of January. That includes things like pharmacy, which sound like they might be early entry, uh, but they're not. If you do ever want to check what an early entry course is, uh, then your the head of year at your child's school should be able to help you, or you can email me and I will be able to give you a really, really quick answer. Uh, just so you know, for this afternoon, I am going to assume that you that, that people here don't know, don't have a lot of knowledge about early entry. So if you know loads, some of this might be uh, a little bit uh, sort of simple, uh, but I want to go right back to basics because I find that often we, we don't, people don't know the ins and outs of this. And they don't know why it's different or how it's different. And that actually includes, includes me. Um, I, uh, I didn't go to Oxford or Cambridge, or I didn't do medicine or dentistry or veterinary. I went to a different university. Um, and I think one of the reasons that this is quite important to me is one of the reasons that I personally didn't apply is because the, the, the sixth form college that I went to, the school I went to, didn't tell us that there was a different deadline. And so there were quite a few people who felt, and, and I've spoken to quite a few people sort of my age who went to schools and colleges that were maybe not so great, uh, that uh, didn't have um, the opportunity to apply for these things. So I really hope that we can, we can make sure that your children do. Um, I do realise, I think I forgot to introduce myself, by the way, I'm Laura <laughs> Stanley, I work at Ackland Burley, uh, I'm the Pathways and Progress Leader, you may have seen me on these uh, webinars before talking about UCAS transition, year 11 to year 12, so on and so forth. Um, what's involved in early entry application then? So the first thing is the UCAS form. Now that is exactly the same as everybody else's UCAS form, it's identical, you get to it in the same place, you fill in the same information, you just have to hand it in earlier. Um, there is usually a pre-interview assessment of some kind. Now, some Oxbridge subjects, all medicine adjacent courses have an assessment that goes alongside them. Uh, the Oxbridge ones, uh, you can check on the websites and see uh, which courses have which assessment. 
they can usually be done in school and they don't cost anything but you have to make sure that your child is re- your child has to make sure that they are registered with the exams officer at their school to take that assessment and that they know when those assessments are and they have all that organized so the sooner they can let their exams officer know the better medicine assessments are a little bit different uh, firstly they have a fee um, there are two medicine assessments. Uh, we're going to talk about those in a little bit more detail later on, a BMAT and a UCAT. The BMAT can be done in some schools. You can do it at Burley, for example. Uh, but the UCAT has to be done in a special Pearson exam centre. Uh, so that needs to be uh, booked online. All of these courses require an interview. Now, just assume that they are definitely going to have an interview. The number of students who don't have an interview is, is vanishingly small for these courses. So assume an interview will be involved. And in some cases as well, there is a written work submission. Uh, so at Oxbridge, especially arts and humanities courses, they sometimes ask to see um, a couple of essays, uh, a portfolio of some kind. This is not assessed, uh, but it's often used in the interview. So it might be used as a prompt by the interviewer. It might be used as a kind of discussion point. The student might be asked, uh, might be be drawn their attention might be drawn to something they wrote and you say what did you mean by this can you tell me a bit more about it it is not uh, a piece of assessed work um i'm not going to go through all of this in loads of detail because we're going to see these things as we come through but this is the kind of timeline that your child should be aiming for if they are an early entry applicant so over the summer uh, getting ucas out the way early drafting personal statements registering for their assessments uh, september is a very busy month because they will be uh working on on uh interview technique working on pre-assessment questions um, October is obviously the deadline. Uh, the interviews for Oxford and Cambridge take place usually in December, um, and Oxbridge usually make their offers in January, although that is getting pushed back a bit, sort of year by year, they're getting a bit later. Uh, medicine interviews can go all the way up to March, so they shouldn't be worried if they don't hear from or get their medicine interview um, you know, up and into 2023. The basic UCAS application then, very, very quickly, involves uh, these things, um, students' personal information, the students' education history, which is the only bit that is a little bit tricky. Uh, it involves a personal statement, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and it also involves a reference and predicted grades, which we write, or that your child's school writes, to be, to be more accurate. And as I say, that needs to be submitted on the 15th of October. The quicker your child can get the personal info bit and the education bit done and out of the way, the better, uh, because that's just admin and that can be done really quickly. If your child attends Burley, then personal development on Monday will be all about filling in uh, the application form. Um, and UCAS applications did open about just before half term, so they are able to start that now. Uh, students can choose up to five universities or courses. So universities or courses, they can apply for five courses at the same uni, except if they're applying for Oxford or Cambridge. Uh, you can only apply to Oxford or Cambridge. You cannot apply to both universities. So they need to choose which one they would like to apply to. And you can only apply, which seems really, really cruel, for one course at either Oxford or Cambridge. Your other four choices must be at four other universities. Um, this Oxford, so there are various reasons behind this. Apparently, it's partly to do with the, uh, the fact the interview process is so long and complex, they can't interview for multiple courses. But whatever the reasoning is, that is unfortunately the case. So they have to choose one uni and one course. If they're applying for medicine, dentistry or veterinary, then four out of the five can be for those courses. And the last one, the fifth one, must be for a different subject. Lots of students apply for something like biochem or bioscience or something like that alongside it. Pharmacy is quite common. Um, or if they only want to do medicine or medicine adjacent, they can just leave the fifth one blank. There is no reason to put a fifth one in just for the sake of it. So let's have a look at these courses quickly first. So they should be applying for I, for either or, do not mix and match between these courses. Uh, and work experience is essential for all of them. We'll talk a bit more, come on to that a bit later, but just so you know up front, this is something that they will need to be planning for. Quick overview of medicine. So it's a five year course, medicine course, and applicants will usually need chemistry and biology. That is the main 
entry requirement, but sometimes some medical schools say that any science and a math is all right. Check the entry requirements carefully. Three STEM subjects is always preferred and they will need to be predicted A and A star grades in all of those subjects. Uh, they will need to sit either a UCAT or a BMAT assessment. And this depends entirely on which university they are applying to. Some unis uh, want, some unis accept a UCAT, some unis accept a BMAT. And this link here amongst various others will just tell you which university requires which uh, test. You can apply to say two unis that want a UCAT, two unis that want a BMAT. Most students don't because they have to revise for two tests and they've got to pay twice, uh, but there is nothing to stop them doing that if they, if they want to. Um, so what the universities do then is they look at the personal statement, they look at their predicted grades, and they look at their test scores on that UCAT or BMAT, and if they are high enough and if they are impressive enough, then they will put them through to an interview. Now, if your child is dead set on medicine, but they are not going to get A and A star grades, there are a small number of medicine foundation courses available. Uh, these are uh, six years rather than five years, and they have it's like an extended medical degree where the first year is uh, a year zero, a foundation year, um, and the entry grades for these are usually ABB, BBB, so they're still not low, they're still high, but they are lower than the A and A star requirement. Now, the downside to this is there are not very many of them. There's only, most of them aren't in London. There's only one in London and they have quite strict application criteria for application. Um, there's a really good uh, guide here to apply to medical school. It says 2019 at the end, but they just haven't changed the URL. It is actually the 2020 guide. Uh, and that's a really kind of concise uh, little guide there to, uh, to medical school. Veterinary, very similar, super competitive. Uh, it's a five year program. Uh, work experience requirements are usually pretty high. Uh, they want quite a lot of practical work experience. And again, just check around what their pre assessment requirements are because they've that varies school by school. It tells you here if you want to click on this link. And dentistry, again, very similar. The diff one of the big differences with dentistry is when you do your interview, they're not just assessing your academics, they're actually assessing your dexterity and manual skills as well, because it's something that you need to have. Um, and you will need to do a UCAP for your dentistry. So again, having a look on the Dental School Council there for more information. Coming back to Oxbridge then, because we're gonna move backwards and forwards between the two. How do you choose? If your child is a potential Oxbridge applicant, which one do they go for? Now, my big recommendation about which one to go for is choose the course, not the university, because actually the unis are pretty similar in, in all the ways that uh, that matter. Uh, alumni will, will tell me I'm wrong, but in, in, in a lot of ways they are similar. Generally speaking, Cambridge courses are a bit broader, especially in their first year, and Oxford is a bit more specialised, uh, but that is quite generally speaking. So look at the course content. They should also look at the colleges, they should look at the accommodation, they should look at which city they'd rather live in, but really it should come down to the course, like it should for, for you know, primarily for, for any university. So it, the best way to see what it's like is, is, to, is to go um, and, and have a look around. If you can get to an open day, you can go and have a look around. Uh, it, they both you know, Oxford and Cambridge are beautiful and it is a real experience just to be there um, and they are different in in feel to to most other universities in the UK uh, it is true that it is a challenge every course there will be a challenge it's hard academic work expected all the time and the schedules of work are very heavy for students uh, because of this uh, you may have heard uh, this, but it is true that there is no paid work allowed in term time for the vast majority of students. There are a few paid positions within colleges that are available, but generally students are not allowed to take up paid work in term time. Um, because of that, they do have scholarships and bursaries available, um, and that is on a college by college basis. Uh, they are traditional. Uh, there's lots of stuff done for you, you know, catered meals, uh, your know, porters, things like that. Um, but you also have this kind of exceptional, these exceptional resources and the best lecturers and academics in the world, really, uh, that you have uh, access to as part of this unique experience. But really, 
encourage your child to do their research. Is this experience, is this traditional, really hardworking experience what they want? Um, it might not be. It might not be for them. And there are lots and lots of other universities that are you know, in cities that are more modern, that have a more modern range of courses that may work better for them, depending on what their interest is. They don't offer exactly the same subjects. So this is another reason to look really carefully. So, you know, if you want to do art, you can't do it at Cambridge because they don't do it. Um, and this is really important with science. So at Oxford, you apply for your biology, chemistry or physics as an individual degree, whereas at Cambridge, you will apply for natural sciences, which is more like triple science, uh, where you do a combination of science and maths modules in year one and then you specialize. So that is quite important for students wanting to study STEM subjects to make sure that they uh, know the difference between the universities there. Uh, they will be asked in their interview, they will be asked why they are applying for this subject here. So it's absolutely essential that they know that and that they have researched the, 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 you know, the modules and that they've looked into the course structure and that they are able to answer questions about that course and why they want to go. Uh, there are, again, a couple of guides there on you know, structure of different courses and how to choose. Uh, we already covered grades for uh, medicine adjacent courses, but just there, these are the typical grade entry grade requirements for Oxford and Cambridge. They do not do conditional offers. So the entry requirements are the entry requirements. They are not flexible. So, um, you know, it, it is worth your, your child being really honest with themselves about um, if these are grades that they, that they are going to get. Um, uh, because they will not make if they don't have these grades on their UCAS form, they will not make it to to interview stage. Um, it is so it is very competitive. Uh, they're also increasingly prescriptive about what A levels they want to do certain courses. So, for example, if you want to do maths at Cambridge, you have to have done further maths A level, um, and you know they they will not budge on that. So so do check. Very, very briefly, uh, they do. You know, one of the main differences between Oxbridge and other universities is they, that they have this college system. So when you apply, you don't just apply to Oxford or Cambridge, you apply to Girton College at Cambridge, you, you, you apply to a specific college. Uh, you can also, if you're not bothered about which college you go to, you can make an open application. Uh, that open application, you are allocated electronically. Uh, your admissions tutors don't know that you've made an open application. Uh, you'll, the student will never be asked if they have or why they haven't. Uh, now, on the surface, there is no advantage or disadvantage to these. The course content, by the way, is identical. You are if you do history, you are taught the same history course. It doesn't matter which college you are. You're, the college is more like your base school. Um, but with colleges, it's really worth having a look at sort of things like where it is, is it big or small and it, what's the accommodation like and is it modern or older and is it self-catered or do they get their dinners um, and also how much it costs because they vary, they vary in terms of cost. Um, Oxford Student Union have this really helpful little college suggester website here that you put in, you know, do I want a busy college or a quiet college? Do I want it here or here? And it tells you where you might want to apply. Um, and there's also a couple of the uh, the unis have their own pages there with kind of guides to different colleges. Um, if your child is in the aspirational team, which they should be, uh, again, I'll mention it again at the end, we are going to do a whole session just on colleges and uh, which colleges to apply to a little bit later this term. So I will be going into loads more detail about it. Uh, but for now, just it's just something to to bear in mind. They don't need to decide at this stage which which college they are applying to. Coming on to work experience, uh, really, really important, not for Oxbridge, doesn't matter for Oxbridge, <laughs> um, but for the medicine adjacent courses, really important. So veterinary, starting with, they are really strict about wax. They want you to have a week around about a week uh, in a veterinary environment. If you cannot get a veterinary environment, they want you to have been caring for animals in some capacity. So that might be, you know, uh, that could be at any other sort of place where you, you find and look after animals. 
Uh, the more experience you've got, the better. I mean, that kind of goes for all of these. Um, medicine expects you to have work experience, but they are a bit more flexible. So, for example, if you can't get work experience in an actual hospital, which was number one hard anyway, and with COVID, it's now really hard. Um, then they will accept work experience in caring environments. In fact, one of the best places to look is care homes, uh, because what they want from the work experience is they want you to prove that you understand not just the, the science, but you understand what the experience of being a doctor and what the, what the job actually involves and what looking after people actually involves. Um, so that are you know, different ways that you can get work experience for medicine that don't involve being in an actual hospital if, if, you, if your child is struggling. Uh, dental courses also expect works. Um, and again, that can be a little bit tricky to get. Um, however, the uh, medschools.ac.uk, excuse me, the academic uh, website for medical schools and the dental schools council and vet schools council have all put together these really good guides about getting work experience and why it's important and where to get it from and this one in particular here it's a little bit it's from uh 2020 i think it was published uh about getting relevant experience during the pandemic but a lot of it is still really relevant uh because of you know restrictions around medical setting going into medical settings and whatever so there's some good advice there um, alongside this, and this is something that they can be doing right now, lots of organisations have put together online learning or online work experience modules for medicine adjacent courses. So Sheffield and Nottingham Unis, for example, uh, alongside FutureLearn, have put together uh, these uh, they're actually actual MOOCs, like online courses uh, about the course, about the profession. And these are fantastic because they're university written and university backed. Um, and they really show if, if you if your child is to do one of these and then put in their personal statement or mention in their interview that they've done it, then it shows that they have done this kind of background work in terms of understanding uh, what's required of them uh, in in med in whatever their whichever career they're going into. But just a couple of words of warning. In terms of online provision, please check who is offering it, uh, because there are some, you know, brilliant supply providers like Sheffield University. You know, you, you're going to be able to trust content that comes from Sheffield University. But there are lots of for-profit organisations out there who have put together often expensive online work experience or virtual experiences of one kind or another which sort of aren't really checked they're not aligned with anybody they are not part of a particular medical school or university they're just people making money so really check and if you're not sure please ask me please just send me the link and say is this legit and i will look into it for you um Likewise, there are lots of people who are trying to take advantage of the fact that it's hard to get work experience and loads of people want to do it by offering very expensive, like work lot, like week long or a few days long residential experiences that can literally run into thousands of pounds. And these are, again, not provided by medical schools. They are often uh, profit making uh, organizations. Now, that doesn't mean they're useless, but it also doesn't mean they're any good. So please don't hand over money before you you check sort of what what is going on and, and check the credentials of who is providing these things. Uh, there are lots of people at med pro, you know, sort of medical portal med projects who do free stuff, uh, really good free stuff, and that is always worth having a look at. Uh, Pre-assessments then. Oxbridge first. So it varies which subjects will need a pre-assessment. So this is after you've handed in your UCAS form, uh, before the interview stage, you will sit and do some kind of exam, some kind of pre-assessment. Uh, there are loads of information about admissions tests and you can check really easily which subjects need admissions tests and which admission, admissions tests they need to sit. And there are also tons of uh, past papers uh, available uh, on the Oxford and Cambridge websites. If you go to the actual subjects, so if you go to uh, Oxford, you go to history and you go to uh, admit you, uh, to entry requirements, you'll be able to find uh, lots of example and pre uh, sort of historical papers on there. 
Uh, not so the one thing that can vary is colleges can really vary what they ask for. So some of them want written work, they don't all want written work. You need to check the subject course page carefully as part of your research and application. And again, check it with the teacher if you're not sure. Um, and revision is absolutely essential because like a lot of these assessments, part of the key to it is working out how they want you to answer as you know, and, and knowing the structure of the paper. Uh, teachers are always a brilliant resource here. We've always got staff who are happy to help out when it comes to giving feedback on papers. So please do use your class teachers as well. Get your children to speak to them as soon as possible if they are applying and you know, let them know that they're applying. So as I said already, medicine, check which uni requires BMAT or UCAP. Register as soon as possible, especially with the UCAP, uh, because it, which opened last week it's only just opened but register as soon as possible because you have to go to an actual assessment center you've got to pick a time to do it and you can end up with just the rubbish ones at the end if you if you leave it too long uh there is so much revision material online for this uh admissiontesting.org is really good the ucap page and the bmap page is a good they've got tons of stuff on there as i said um medical projects uh the uh, medical council website i've put a load of stuff in the aspirational team as well um i would really recommend this for anyone who has to sit a bmat um admissions testing are doing a bmat live chat um at the end of june uh, for students to walk them through the paper they are pretty good uh at uh access in terms of showing students breakdowns of papers, how to answer questions. But again, they have students have to really engage with this because the papers are very specific. They're written in a specific way. They need a particular kind of response and they need to get used to answering those questions before they sit down and do the real thing. Um, Oxbridge pre-admissions tests are free. And as I said, you can sit them in school. Just let your exams officer know as soon as possible. Unfortunately, medical ones are not free. Uh, your BMAT is £61. It's £61 last year. It's not opened yet. It will be around the same this year. Um, now, if you uh, if your child is in receipt of bursary, you can apply for a refund of your fees. You unfortunately do have to pay first. But if that is a barrier to application, please let your uh, base school know uh, and they will be able to arrange something to, to make sure that your child can still sit there being that. Um, Somehow that, one, somehow that one got lost. Uh, the UCAS application, you also have to pay for that's £26.50. And the UCAT is £70. Now, you can apply to UCAT directly uh, for uh, your fees to be paid. And again, if your child is in receipt of a bursary from school, then they should be eligible for a UCAT bursary. And you can just go through that link there. Uh, you will have to submit some information. It's usually a letter from the school uh, confirming that they are in receipt of bursary. Uh, that does need to be set at UCAT Centre, though. So you need to go on the Pearson View website and you need to find the nearest centre uh, and book a test slot. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, just a tiny little bit here about medicine. They're sometimes called gateway or foundation courses. As I said, these are for students who are really keen to do medicine. Uh, they don't do them for veterinary or, or for uh, dentistry, but really keen to do medicine. But they don't quite have the uh, a the, you know, the very high A's and A star grades that are that are required. Um, there aren't very many. There's about ten, I think, and King's is the only one in London. So they are going to have to be prepared to go to wherever if they if they are wanting to do one of these one of these courses. Uh, the typical requirements BBB. Um, and they always have other widening participation criteria. So this is these are things like if your child is a member of a group of people who do not who don't go to university uh, as much, if they are in receipt of bursary, uh, other criteria such as that, then uh, they have a better chance of getting in than students uh, who don't. Now, this can be a bit of a minefield in terms of applications because you have to navigate this criteria. So please check as soon as possible with the HE advisor at your school, me if it's Burley, your head of year will be able to tell you if it's another school uh, so we can help and we can help early because they can be just a little bit tricky. 
Um, a few quick things that I don't have time to talk about <laughs> in, in much detail. Uh, the main one is, is personal statements. Uh, we you, Students should be collecting stuff over summer to write in their personal statements. Uh, forget extracurricular, they aren't bothered. Uh, unfortunately, rightly or wrongly, about extracurricular stuff. Uh, these statements need to be all academic. They need to have lots of supercurricular. Supercurricular is learning that they have done outside of the classroom. So lectures they have attended or watched, podcasts they've listened to, books they've read, articles they've read that are linked to their subject to show that they are interested in extending that knowledge outside of the classroom. Uh, read examples of personal statements that's the best way to get the hang of how to do them there are loads on unifrog i've got loads of examples as well start drafting early so as i said get the admin stuff for ucast done as soon as possible spend the summer topping up super curricula uh attend summer schools workshops lectures open days do MOOCs. you know set aside that bit of time over the summer to make sure that they've got this stuff um and then interviews which as I say don't come around until uh sort of December if your child gets to interview stage then we will support them and we will help them with mock interviews or, or, or the child's school will help them with mock interviews to make sure that they are prepared uh there's often more than one uh Oxbridge haven't announced this year whether they're doing them in-house or remote they've been online for the last two years but in the past they've actually invited students to go and stay for a couple of days um they should expect panel interviews, they should expect to get prompt material to read and comment on. And medical interviews are different as well. Medical interviews are something called MMI, multiple mini interviews, where they go around and, and, and do exactly that to different kinds of stations and do multiple different short interviews in different on different things and in different areas. And again, there is some information there. But the key thing I think is that the they will they won't be on their own this is quite an intimidating process uh, but we will do whatever we can to help you uh, i have dragged in uh, friends lecturers people from all <laughs> over dragged in sounds awful i've got uh, to do uh um mock interviews we've had students at cambridge and and oxford who've helped with personal statements we you know, we really do uh make sure that students are as prepared as possible for this so what they need to do now, firstly, join the aspirational team if they haven't already. They are probably already a member. Uh, if they go on to Teams, they should be able to check. But if they can't find it or they don't know, email me and I will add them or tell them. We do webinars every couple of weeks. We've got one tomorrow, which is on choosing courses and narrowing down course choices. Uh, I very, very strongly recommend it. And I also post loads of opportunities and stuff and resources in there. Choose course research the experience uh you know don't just listen to teachers go and look on forums and and find out what it's really like to study these things and study at these places read around make sure that it, in reality it you know, it matches what it's like in their head and that there isn't too much of a disconnect once they're certain let the head of year or me if they're abs know what they're applying for and where they're applying for it so we can organize assessments so we can get support in place um, start to choose their college if they're oxbridge check the college's entry requirements uh, they need to book their bema or ucat themselves we cannot do that for them check the dates start revising loads of practice papers get the admin bits out of the way spend summer building up a super curricular portfolio as i've said make a note of uh, all the you know, the super curricular things that they have done and keep a record of it so they can refer to it in their personal statements come back to it in their uh, interviews and i really really recommend signing up for a summer school uh, you, the name is a bit of a misnomer it doesn't take all summer they're usually like a day or two um, Sometimes they're in person, which is fab, so, but a lot of them are remote if they can't get to things in person or look for a mentoring opportunity, something like this. This link here is to Apply Cambridge, which is open to anyone in a state school who is applying to any course at Cambridge. And this is a six month programme that, that is a series of workshops, webinars. It, you get a mentor, uh, you get help with your with your statements and all kinds of things. Um, and these you know, that would be absolutely you know, perfect and invaluable for any student who is applying to a course at Cambridge uh, again this is the kind of thing that I put in the aspirational team and I'm like apply for this
and extra support in the team. Uh, Hilary Tate at LSU runs the LaSwap Medics Group. Very, very recommended if we have any medics, year team, and HE careers advisor and subject teachers, of course. So I'm just going to have a quick drink and I'll have a look at questions. Fab. So just looking in the chat. Uh, thank you, Anna, for putting my email in there. I, please feel free to email me about anything that I've said, um, if I've gone too quickly on something, if it's confusing. Uh, and Anna has also put the open days booking for Oxford and Cambridge in there. Thank you. Uh, the PowerPoint will be on the Ackland Burley website, uh, and I can also email it to you directly. If, if you email me, I can send it to you. Um, so if you want the links to either the recording or to the slides, as I say, just drop me an email and Anna's put that information in there. Uh, Gresham, thank you, Anna. They, like, this is one of my favorite things that I'm always telling students to, to go to that I'm recommending. Gresham College is absolutely brilliant. Uh, they do lectures. Go and see one if you can. They're, be, they're back in person again. Um, sort of, you know, now we're coming out of COVID, but if you can't go and see them, they're all recorded. They're not only all recorded, there are transcripts of them all. So if, you're, you're, if your young person is someone who uh, prefers to read something or read something and follow along as they're listening, then there are transcripts there. And they are honestly on anything you can think of. And they are delivered by the best academics in the country. They are just superb. It's such an amazing free resource. Um, really, really fantastic. Uh, how do you join Unifrog? So uh, you will need to contact the your child's tutor about Unifrog because they will need a code uh, in order to join Unifrog and the code is different depending on the tutor group that they're in. Uh, so if you ask your child to uh, speak to their tutor or if you ask them for their tutor's email and just contact them directly, they'll be able to give you that code and get you signed in. Unifrog is another brilliant resource. Um, it allows you to make really good shortlists of universities. As I say, it's got example personal statements on there. Um, it's, it is great. There's, they've got a whole Oxbridge section actually, which is, is really useful. So once our UCAS form application has been completed and sent it to our base school for it to be checked, yep. So once you finish your UCAS form, that is, and you press and you pay and you press send, that doesn't send it straight to UCAS, that sends it to your tutor at your base school. They, will, they should then check it for you and make sure that it's all, all okay before it gets sent off to UCAS, but check with each individual school because they might have slightly different processes. That's how we do it at Burley. I check all of them before they go, uh, but other schools might have slightly different processes around that. Uh, so do, do check in. Uh, the aspirational team, so we just got a question about that. It is a group to join on Teams. It is just online. Uh, so it is not a physical group, uh, but Miss Tate who runs the medics group. They are uh, they do some uh, in person meetings, but the aspirational team is all on Teams. It's all online. Uh, the Elna, I believe you can take uh, at school at some schools that you have to be a registered center to take to take it. So you need to check with the individual school uh, to see uh, whether they are registered to deliver the LNAT, which is the law uh, assessment for people who are not quite sure. Uh, Sutton Trust summer schools deadline has passed. Yes, uh, that is that one has passed, but there are plenty more summer schools where the deadline has not yet passed. Um, and even some places where the summer schools deadline has passed, they are still offering things like workshops uh, and lectures all the way through uh, summer and into August as well. So even if your child maybe can't get on the summer school that they really wanted to, because it's a bit late, then there will be other opportunities for them to, to do things. So just a couple of questions in the Q&A. Uh, all the URLs that are in the website, if you would kindly email me, uh, I'll just drop my uh, email in the chat again, because it's, uh, it's gone past the Akron Burley. Uh, then I will send the PowerPoint directly to you, which will have all, which obviously has all the URLs embedded 
uh, embedded in it because I don't have uh, obviously I, I don't have your your email address to send them on. So please do contact me uh, if or if you prefer the PowerPoint will be on the Ackland Burley website in the uh, sixth form area and you can uh, get it from there, download it from there as well. Um, and just a question, what is the aspirational team? As I said, it is a, it is a team, on Microsoft Teams, it is a team. Uh, uh, different schools nominated a number of students to join the aspirational team, students that they thought were uh, high, you know, really high achieving or students who were working really hard and uh, were really kind of uh, sort of determined to go to high and to, to high uh, sort of competitive universities. And we added all those students to a team and we've been running webinars and uh, providing you know, and posting other opportunities, uh, super curricular links, things like that for them to to see. Um, if you're but I, I've, you know, we added um, a certain number of you know, number of students from each school, but we have made it open to you to anyone who wants to join. So if your child, if they check, check on their log into teams and check. Um, if they are not a member of the aspirational team, but they would like to join, then please, again, just email me with their e school email address. Uh, they can be added at any time. There is no uh, sort of cutoff point or and don't worry about that. And all of the work that we've done is already there. The webinars have been recorded. The slides are there. So if there is anything that they haven't seen, they can go back and, and find that information really, really quickly. Um, so please do let me know if they if they feel that they have you know, if 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 they feel that they they haven't been added and they would they would like to be. Sorry, excuse me. In terms of Oak College, Oxbridge College Open Days, um, they they are when they. I think Anna put the uh, link to the Open Days in the chat, um, and there's no kind of criteria to attend the Open Days. Anyone can attend the Open Days. Uh, you just have to. Just, I think they're still asking people to sign up again. Sort of post COVID, most places are asking you know, people to to register or to sign up so they can manage numbers uh, but there's no uh, requirements um, around it anyone can attend a, an open day lovely thank you so i think that's everything uh in in both chats if anyone's got any more questions please do sort of post them now either in the q a or in the chat and i will answer them um otherwise uh you've everyone's got my email as i said please do feel free to get in touch about anything i've said today there is a lot to take in especially because i'm trying to cover oxford cambridge and the medicine adjacent stuff so i'm aware that not all of it is relevant to everyone and i'm ping-ponging around a little bit between these areas um there is a lot of information here to try and cover but i'm more than happy uh to to go over any of it again to break it down uh to to simplify it as i've said i know what it's like from experience like a long time ago but my own experience to miss out on an opportunity because i wasn't given the information um, and so i'd really want to make sure that that doesn't happen to to any of our students just got one more question sorry so about uh mock grades what kind of grades will be used on the UCAS applications it is always a uh so we take a holistic grade and then it is an aspirational grade aspirational but realistic um on the UCAS form again um, we don't just use the HSEs <laughs> to inform our UCAS grade we use a holistic kind of uh knowledge of the student over the year um and when we decide on that grade it is something that we believe they can get but it is a you know an aspirational grade as as well we we're not in the business of um under uh sort of you know, putting grades that are that are too low on UCAS forms we want to give all our students the best opportunity they can to get on the courses that they that they want to get on okay thank you very much everyone um i'm about to finish up for the evening uh thanks for coming thank you to anna for uh being really really helpful in the chat thank you ron for coming along as well uh lovely to, to see so many people as i say please do get in touch if uh, if i can be of any help
Have a lovely evening. Goodbye.